As you know, we are dealing a lot with the prosperity gospel these days. You know that we're here in Botswana and we face this all the time. Not only that, it comes from America. And most of these preachers that are in this neck of the woods certainly understand uh, names like Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, uh, Kenneth Copeland, uh, those and such, such like uh, Benny Hinn. They are very in tune with these health and wealth preachers. Basically, the prosperity gospel is just saying that if we are following the Lord perfectly, we will have no contentions. Or if we have anything, it will be very light and brief. The Lord will quickly sweep it aside. And this really is not the gospel at all. Not the, it's not the gospel. It's not the Bible. It's not the complete teaching. Really, the benefits that the Lord gives us, he gives us peace. He gives us hope for eternity. We don't have to be caught up in the day-to-day -day that is around us. Even of those who might say that they are not preaching a prosperity gospel, it's generally considered that, you know, Christians are going to be in pretty good shape, come what may. They won't suffer much, if at all. Uh, but some of the more extreme of the prosperity gospel teachers then would say, if you are suffering, if there are problems and stuff, it's, it's your own fault. And uh, we really do not find that in Scripture. So I just wanted to look at a couple of examples today that the Lord kind of embedded in me long ago. Because if you're really trying to live for Christ, you're going to run into contentions. And I want you to know that. I want you to be comforted. I don't want you to think something is wrong because Satan is opposing you. That's exactly what the Lord has said would happen. Uh, the example that the Lord had given me, first of all, was a comparison between the Apostle Peter and then Stephen. This is in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 7. You might remember that in Acts chapter 2, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, as were all the disciples, all those waiting. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And he spoke, and 3,000 came to the Lord. But when we get to Acts chapter 7, in fact, I looked it up. It's both in chapter 6 and in chapter 7. That is, Stephen was filled with the Holy Ghost. But when he was speaking, he was stoned to death. Uh, did not have the same effect on the crowd. Of course, the crowd was uh, falsely accusing him. So you see, one time it was good and one time it was bad. That is, to the eye, it was good and bad. And that's really how, you know, it's really what we're going by, you know, what we're looking at. That's how the prosperity gospel is. Things will go well, they'll feel well. People will like you all the time. It's just like this. But we have to trust in the Lord. And I just wanted to cite also, here it is from Acts 16 then also. This is Paul and Silas. Okay, when they had gone through the throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. And they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Mysia came to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. That there stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately... We endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Uh, you may know the results of what happened, but I will read it. Uh, as it was, they prayed over the damsel with divination, cast out the spirit. And here we have that the multitude rose up together against them. The magistrates rent off their clothes, commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Yes, I'm going a little quickly, but all of these references will be in the description for you. So the thing is, Paul and Silas really sought the Lord for where they were to go. And God was gracious, gave Paul a vision by night, and said that they were assured that they should go there. You know, they were seeking the Lord. This was God's will. But look what happened. They were taken. They were beaten. They were thrown in prison. Yet they were walking in the center of God's will. This is something that we really have to focus on. And I just want believers out there to know this. Because maybe you're facing that. Uh, remember how it was with Job. When Job was so cast down. Uh, the scripture says that. 
it doesn't tell us to the effect he had no original sin, but there was nothing he had done sinfully that brought all the hardship upon him. Yet his friends that had come were accusing him that he must have done something wrong, he must have been in sin, or all of this evil wouldn't come upon him. So I just want you to realize, you know, if you have prayed and sought the Lord, do his will and don't worry about the consequences. That may be easier said than done at times. But this is, this is for your own assurance, for your admonition to go forward. We must wait on the Lord. One of the scriptures I have cited is Luke 17, 10, where Jesus says that after we have done all that is commanded us, we should say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which is our duty to do. And this is where waiting on the Lord comes in. The thing is, we may not always see what the Lord is doing. We may not always see what the prophet is, per se, uh, at least not right away. Sometimes it could take a few days. Sometimes it could take a few years. Sometimes we may never see it. The important thing is to obey the Lord and know that by example, you know, the devil doesn't want us to, to get away with that. And so he's going to try to discourage us. But I'd just like you to take these examples from the book of Acts, the early believers, take them to heart and be assured and comforted that the Lord is with you. Leave the, leave the figuring, the accounting up to him, because he it is that does the real work in the heart. May God bless.